I saw a lot of people on the poll that I posted on my YouTube channel also wanted a kind of lecture series on quantum mechanics. So even though I'm doing the electrodynamics one, I thought, eh, well, I might as well do this because quantum is a really fun class as well. So that's what we're going to do. This can be a pretty difficult subject for a lot of people, but it's also very fun and very rewarding. And I'm going to try to fill in any blanks that some people may have if they just go through your Griffiths, which is the book I'm using, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, the third edition. Um, so this structure, I did not come up with this structure. I didn't come up with the exam. I might come up with examples at some point, but for the most part, um, the whole structure and format is following the book. And my goal of this series is to fill in the blanks for some people if they read and they don't really understand quite what they mean or they're not sure how they got to a certain result. My goal is to hopefully fill in that gap and, uh, help students that way. In addition, there's a lot of problems in this textbook that's worth doing, and I have a lot of the solutions on my channel. So I, I really recommend, in addition to watching these, to work the problems. And if you get stuck, there's a decent chance that I have the solution worked out that you can follow along with. So that is what I'm going to do. I think this video series will be very useful to watch as you're studying in preparation for a class lecture or self-studying or anything like that. I think this could be useful. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's actually get into it. And that's funny. This is my electrodynamics notes, but that's okay. We'll just keep going. Okay, so we're going to talk about what's called Schrodinger's equation. And we're going to start by considering what we've learned in classical mechanics, if hopefully that's something you've learned at this point, where you have some object that might have some forces acting on it. Just drawing a little free body diagram. And we kind of have a couple options. Our goal is to find x as a function of time because once we have x as a function of time everything else kind of opens up so we can find our velocity by taking a time derivative of position and with our velocity we can find our momentum or we can find our kinetic energy so we can learn a lot about this system if we're able to find x of t and we do that we have a couple ways so in physics one for example you might learn, and I'm going to write this maybe um, like this, Newton's second law. Your force is m times acceleration, which is the second derivative position. So if you're good with the forces, if the forces are obvious, you can use Newton's second law, solve this differential equation to get x of t. We also have... Euler-Lagrange equation, and we can use this to also find, we'll also get a differential equation from this, and we can solve that. We have our Hamiltonian. We can find that, and then we can solve Hamilton's equations and get our, basically all of these allow us to find x as a function of time. So that's all well and dandy, and that's good to know because there's something similar that we use in quantum mechanics. But in quantum mechanics, we're not interested in x of t. We're interested in psi which is actually a function of two variables, x of t. It can be a function of more. It can be a function of x, y, z, and t, or anything in between. But for simplicity, let's just keep it as that. So we're looking for our wave function now, not our position. 
And now the question is, okay, we have all these cool ways of finding our position in classical mechanics. How do we find our wave function in quantum mechanics? And for that, we use what's called Schrodinger's equation. I'm just going to throw it at you here. It's I times h bar, a partial derivative of psi with respect to t. We set that equal to minus h bar squared over 2m. The second derivative of psi with respect to position plus the potential energy times psi. So i is the square root of negative 1. H bar is the reduced Planck's constant, which is H divided by 2 pi, which ends up working out to 1.054573. Uh, times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Okay? So this Schrodinger's equation is a lot like the Euler-Lagrange equation or... Newton's second law, or the Hamiltonian, where uh, we have this, in this case, it's a partial differential equation, and we're trying to solve for not our x of t, but our uh, psi. So a lot of times, what we're going to do is we're going to solve Schrodinger's equation. We're going to spend a good chunk of this book learning how to solve it in different environments, different situations with a different potential. So we'll learn about all sorts of different situations like an infinite square well, a free particle, harmonic potential, all these different things. We'll learn about how to solve this differential, partial differential equation. So that's kind of where we're going on. In the next section, we're going to talk about what psi actually is because it's still kind of a weird abstract idea. And it's still going to be a pretty weird abstract idea after the next video, but it'll have at least maybe a little bit more meaning to you after this. After that, we'll start talking about probability, and then things will start to get a little bit more fun. So hopefully this is a decent first introduction. If this is something you like, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll continue that this series as well as the other one. Thank you.